have a confession. I'm a Disney adult. Hey everyone, it's Molly with Mammoth Club, and I am here today to do a little experiment. As I said, I'm a Disney adult, which according to the internet is like the worst thing you can be. But I've so far found it to be quite lovely. Am I doing it wrong? We're going to put that to the test. I have reached out across the internet. I have scoured the deep, dark web. And I have found the most cringeworthy things about being a Disney adult. And I'm going to do all of them today. See how I feel at the end of this. To see how truly terrible it is to be a Disney adult. Let's get to it. All right, let's see what's on the list here. Wear mini ears. Check. Disney shirt. Check. Disney accessories. Check. This is easy so far. Now that one, that's peak Disney adult. Next up on the list, I am to eat something Mickey shaped for breakfast in the Magic Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. At a character dining restaurant, as an adult, alone. Tough order, but let's do it. We're headed to the Crystal Palace, a buffet with character located right here on the end of Main Street, USA. And a little bonus fun fact, have you ever noticed that this side of the Crystal Palace is different than this side of the Crystal Palace? That's because this side with that big patio, the glasswork, the ornate light fixtures, that's your Main Street, USA side. So it's very in keeping with the theme of turn of the century Main Street, USA. This side, however, is right as you're headed into Adventureland. So gone is the porch, gone are those ornate light fixtures, and now you have a green awning to protect you from that harsh jungle sun. Theming. A plus over the top. Maybe knowing that makes me a Disney adult, but you know what? I think it's cool. According to the internet, there's nothing sadder than an adult who wants to meet Disney characters, and that's only amplified when they're eating a sad Mickey waffle all by themselves. When this first reopened after the closure, this was not character dining, and it was not a buffet, but now Crystal Palace has returned to its former glory. Crystal Palace is a character dining buffet, and it's typically Winnie the Pooh, Piglet, Tigger, and Eeyore, your 100-acre wood friends. It is $45 for adults, $29 for kids at breakfast, and at lunch and dinner, Dinner that goes up to $59 per adult, $38 per kid. It is an all you care to enjoy buffet, and that does include beverages such as water, tea, soda, coffee, juice. However, they also have adult beverages and specialty beverages you can up to. Uh, you're not allowed to order alcohol in the Magic Kingdom outside of sit down restaurants, so they do have a small selection of beer, wine, cider, and cocktails. Crystal Palace is always one of my favorite dining experiences growing up, so now I'm here to feed my inner child and my cringy Disney adult. You are so cute! All my friends are in there. They should come see you, right? They should come have breakfast with you. <laughs> oh, can we take a selfie, Piglet? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I understand this day don't skip baseball. I know, I know. I thought it would be fine. Um, I, it's not the first time I've seen characters since the closure. I cried a lot then, but I haven't seen these characters. And Winnie the Pooh's always been one of my favorite stories. Tigger's actually my favorite of the gang. He's my second favorite behind Buzz, so. I may be proving the wrong point. <laughs> All right, well, they're doing a friendship parade, and this is the cutest thing I've ever seen, so. Look at Piglet and his little pinwheel. I mean, I can't. Taking a look at the buffet, starting things off, we've got the kids' station that anybody's welcome to dine from. You've got waffles, pancakes, French toast, and syrup. Next up, you have an assortment of pastries, including croissants, chocolate croissants, blueberry muffins, various danishes and toppings, such as jellies, butters, marmalades, etc. Then we move into a nice cold bar with a harvest grain apple salad fresh fruit and a granola bar, as well as some smoked salmon and capers. We're then moving to our hot bar where you've got a roast beef hash, as well as a plant-based tofu curry. Then we've got a couple frittatas, a Denver and a Mediterranean, Southern style biscuits and gravy, scrambled eggs, cheesy potato casserole, cheddar grits, Creole shrimp, bacon, sausage, celebration pancakes, more pancakes, and finally grits, 
and oatmeal with toppings. There's a cold bar with a variety of breads, white wheat, toast, bagels, and donuts. Can't wait for those. As well as a few fancier desserts, there's a blackberry streusel coffee cake, breakfast lasagna, and churro waffles. And there's also plain old cold cereal, which I think is perfect if you've got little ones who are picky. They will likely be able to find something to eat here. Grabbed my goodies off of the buffet. A couple things I've noticed that are different from prior to the closure is that like they don't have an omelet station anymore. They've got pre-made variety of omelets. Oh my gosh. Hold on, I'm getting distracted because Eeyore and Pooh are so close to me. As a little bonus pro tip when you come to a character meal, ask your server when the characters are going to come to your table, like what route they take, so that way you're not up at the buffet and then see like Pooh by your table and then panic uh, that you need to run back over here because they take unusual routes. So if you say like, hey, when do I need to be back at my table? They can let you know. It's so good to see you. It's been so long. Oh, you like it? Honey? Do you even put tea in there or just honey? Honey. Just I honey. About this much tea <laughs> and this much And honey. mostly honey. There you go. Can we take a selfie, Pooh? Okay, back to the food. I went for a classic Mickey waffle. I have to every time I do a character meal. They are just the best. I also got one of the churro Mickey waffles. I'm not a huge churro person, but how could I not? This is also that blackberry coffee cake that looked delicious. I also couldn't resist the celebration pancake, even though I'm more of a waffle person than a pancake person. It had sprinkles, so obviously. As far as savories go, I've got, grabbed a little sausage, a little of that cheesy potato casserole, sausage and gravy, uh, sausage, gravy, and biscuit, and one of the little frittatas. I kind of love these little baby frittatas. It's got some onion in there, spinach, feta. This is the Mediterranean one. We're going to start with that. That's pretty good. The feta is nice. Next up, the sausage, gravy, and biscuits. That's surprisingly good gravy. Alan makes really good sausage gravy being southern and all. And I'm surprised by how delicious this is. Lots of good flavor, nice flaky biscuit. This might be a standout for me. Potato. Cheesy casserole. Nothing out of the ordinary flavor-wise, but a very solid hash brown casserole. Lots of cheese. And now the sausage, which I poured maple syrup on, which I'm sure people are yelling about. Good breakfast sausage. I wish it was a little spicier. There's a little pepper to it. But it's not over the top. Now onto the sweet fruits. The pancake is good. The chef told me that on top of it's like a cream cheese icing, so it's a little too sweet for me because it's already sweet. Um, but it's really cute and rainbow sprinkles or 50 sprinkles, which we love. And now a Mickey waffle. There is just something about a Mickey waffle. I tell you what, it's the malted mixture that they use. It's so good. They're just so good, and they're so special, and if eating it is cringy, then call me cringe, because it's delicious. You're in there, Tigger! All my friends are in there! <laughs> yeah, they can see you in there! Oh, it's okay. Don't worry, Tigger. Don't worry at all. <laughs> You're so cute! <laughs> I just love you so much. Oh, thank you, you're so cute. Can we take a selfie? Okay. Last things to sample, this blueberry, or I'm sorry, blackberry streusel coffee cake looks yum. Ooh. Obviously the Mickey waffle is number one for sweet because it's a classic, but that is fabulous. It is very sweet, 
um, but there's a little bit of tartness from the jam, and you've got that cinnamon flavor. I wish the coffee flavor was stronger, which I understand why it's not, because we are at a family dining um, experience, so coffee's not a super popular flavor. It tastes more like a, a crumble or like a cobbler than it does coffee cake, but it's still very, very good. And last but not least, the Mickey churro. Like I said, I'm not a huge churro fan. I think that's in part because I'm a Walt Disney World pass holder, not a Disneyland pass holder, and the churros are much better in Disneyland. It has to do with how they're stored, uh, how they're made, and the humidity in Florida are the things I've been told. Um, and they're, they're very hit or miss here. Like, they can be a little stale almost. So I wasn't sure what I was expecting, but that was actually quite nice. It took me by surprise because it was thicker than I expected it to be, but it does have that cinnamon sugar churro taste, and it's still a little bit warm, and it's much doughier than a churro out of the carts usually are. So I think if you're a churro fan, this is going to be like a whole run for you. Hi, Eeyore. How are you? You okay? Just all right. I'm glad to see you. Can I give you a hug? Thank you, Eeyore. All my friends want you to come visit. Yeah, you, they should come visit you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I get it. Meeting characters, hugging characters, going to character dining. On surface level, yeah, sure. Maybe it's cringy. Maybe it's Disney adult. Maybe even other Disney adults are like, that's a step too far. I understand what is happening here at a logical level. But on the other hand, what's so wrong with leaving a little magic? And even though the characters are fully back to hugging and signing autographs, they did still give me one of these cute little cards as a take home. I think that's a nice little touch because you could use it as a bookmark or frame it or put it in a scrapbook or whatever. And it's super cute, but feel free to bring your autograph books too. I had a lovely breakfast at the Crystal Palace. It remains one of my favorite character experiences because I love the Winnie the Pooh characters. And this is really the only place you can see Piglet and Eeyore. And the line for Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2 gets really long at Fantasyland. So I think this is a great choice if you enjoy those characters as well. My two ideal times for a breakfast reservation, and I do prefer breakfast over other meals just because I think it is less expensive. It, Disney does a great breakfast buffet. Um, and I, so I think it's a little more cost effective, but I like to do either a really early morning so that you get into the park before it even opens and you get that nice, quiet Main Street, beautiful photos. Or if you're going to be rope dropping to get on a bunch of rides or take advantage of that early park admission as a resort guest, I like to do like a 1030, so kind of like a brunch reservation. That way you can have some snacks in the morning, coffee or something on your way to come rope drop, get here early, knock out a bunch of stuff. And then right when the crowds are picking up and the lines are getting long, you can relax a little bit and have a nice indoor dining experience for an hour or so character dining check i do think alone character dining is probably the most disney adult thing you can do do i feel weird about it no i don't but i get it if you do next up on the list take a selfie with the castle with pleasure You gotta take a selfie with a castle, and I'm gonna provide some of my best castle selfie tips right now to make sure yours is as elite as possible. First castle selfie tip, the most important castle selfie tip, do not take your selfie anywhere right here. Don't do it, don't do it down Main Street even. I know, I know, I'm sorry. I love Main Street USA as much as the next person, but you know what I don't love? All these other people. I mean, I'm sure they're all nice, no offense, everyone, but if you're taking your castle selfie or your photo pass picture or your Christmas card, do you really want all these strangers in the back of it? No, you don't. You don't know them. Go to the side of the castle, like so. The very best angles for castle photos are not dead on because you're always gonna get people in the background. And if you get close enough that you aren't, then you're not gonna see the full scale of the castle. 
when the ramps up the side of the castle are open and available that is a great place to go you can wait a few minutes and usually get a great shot unfortunately they're roped off right now because mickey's magical friendship fair which is the castle stage show happening right now is going to happen in a few minutes um so other places i suggest liberty square bridge on this side of the castle Tomorrowland bridge on that side of the castle or come under these little archways to the left and right of the castle and you can take a great shot like so See how much better the pics on the side are? That's what you gotta go with. That's the Christmas card. Now, headed to check the next thing off of the list and that's get a collectible. And there's a special one that came out today that I had my eye on and I'm headed to get it right now. When I'm talking collectibles, I'm talking more than your jewelry, your shirts, even more than your ears, I'd say. I'm talking about the things people don't understand. I'm talking popcorn buckets, Figment looking at you. I'm talking zippers, I'm talking pins, I'm talking dolls, toys, collectible, limited release things that people go absolutely nuts for and non-Disney people don't get it. You know what? Maybe it is kind of cringy that I woke up at like 7.30 this morning to mobile order on an app a $30 popcorn bucket featuring a character from a ride that's not even in this theme park anymore. Maybe it's even worse that I ordered two. One to give to my best friend and one to keep. Oh my gosh, it's a treasure trove. It's a treasure trove. Is this ridiculous? Is this absolutely ridiculous that I have two Mr. Toad popcorn buckets complete with rainbow popcorn? Yeah, it's ridiculous. But you know what? Who cares? Who cares? It's hilarious. It's adorable makes you happy get it i will say my only regrets about the mr toad are that it, it's very heavy hanging around your neck you know what i mean like this is giving me disney doll vibes walking around with these displaying my trophies proudly it's kind of hurting my neck also i do want to shout out the mobile order system oh my gosh as someone who has stood in a long line for a popcorn bucket before it is so much better that i could mobile order it from the comfort of my own home in my bed this morning at like eight o'clock. I mobile ordered these. I picked 1245 and then I just picked them up. Easy peasy, they had all kinds of toads lined up there. So I hope Disney does this for every collectible drop for the rest of time. Cause seriously, no judgment if you stood in a seven hour line for Figment, the popcorn bucket. How long would you wait to pay $25 for some popcorn? <laughs> Not kidding. Uh, right? Yeah. Take a look. It is estimated some people waited hours. I saw some estimates, six hours. I mean, these wow. lines are crazy. But that is a hard thing to try and explain to not Disney people. You know what I mean? Like you can probably convince them that rides are fun and that eating and drinking is fun, but it is hard to talk to non-Disney people about the desire to spend in a seven hour line for a plastic purple dragon popcorn collectible. But if you did it, I salute you. For those watching who may not know who this is, allow me to introduce to you Jay Thaddeus Toad, the star of the former attraction, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. It actually sat right here in Fantasyland where the real estate mogul Winnie the Pooh has since kicked him out uh, and taken over. But Mr. Toad's Wild Ride was an opening day Fantasyland attraction. It's also an opening day Disneyland attraction and it's still out in Disneyland. But it takes you on a wild ride in nowhere in particular with Mr. Toad, all his friends. You eventually drunk drive, crash your car and go to hell. And I'm not sure why they got rid of it, but I love him. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride is one of my favorite rides every time I go to Disneyland. It's usually one of the first uh, rides I do. I adore him. I actually think it was the very first ride I ever rode at Disneyland. I didn't go to Disneyland until I was a grown adult. And the first thing I did was go on the Wild Ride. And of course, it's Max's favorite ride. So we love it. We love it. And yeah, $30 may be expensive and it may be ridiculous. But who's it hurting? Speaking of ridiculous, and incredibly long lines. We're now headed out of the Magic Kingdom to acquire the rest of the Disney adult things on our list, including a ridiculously large cookie that people waited almost 12 hours to get at one point. Welcome to Disney Springs. This is Walt Disney World's shopping and dining and entertainment district. And it's arguably the least Disney place 
when you compare it to some of the theme parks. Sure, there's merchandise locations that sell walls of many ears and thousands of pins, but you've also got some of the finest dining in the world because James Beard award-winning chefs set up shop here. But don't worry, we're gonna do the cringy stuff. I will say though, if you are traveling with someone in your party who is not bought into the Disney thing, first of all, cut them out of your life. If that's not possible, bring them to Disney Springs. There are plenty of non-Disney related activities. There is plenty of amazing dining and nightlife. Alan and I did a progressive dinner through Disney Springs where we ate at six courses. There's amazing food and cocktails that most people wouldn't expect to find in the heart of Mickey Mouse. And in a place where Disney cult fandom and excellent in cuisine combine, we are headed to Gideon's Bakehouse. This quickly became a fan favorite. It is a local Orlando favorite. There's a shop not too far away, and they opened up here in Walt Disney World unofficially in December less than two years ago. And it is such a fan favorite that most of the time when you want a cookie here, you have to wait in a virtual queue that can get to be several hours long. People that don't get Disney and people that have never had a Gideon's cookie may not understand what they're missing out on. But if you're a Disney adult, you probably understand the hype. Gideon's was founded by a once rock star turned baker named Steve, who named the famous bakery after an old book he found in the antique shop where a boy named Gideon had owned a journal and he wrote all about how he wanted to one day own his own bakery. So when Steve created the perfect cookie, he named it after that small child, which I just think is so cool. The aesthetic of Gideon's Bakehouse is like if Haunted Mansion met the most wonderful bakery you've ever been to. And again, he's known for his gigantic half pound cookies. They also have as big as your face cake slices, incredible cold brews, and other treats on tap. But like I said, I'm about to stand in a 20, 30 minute line to get a cookie, and that's not even close to the longest I've waited to get one. Luckily, if the line gets too long, they do resort to a virtual queue system, meaning they'll get your information, your phone number, give you a quoted wait time. You can go about your day here in Disney Springs, go eat, drink, shop, wherever you'd like to, and they'll let you know when to come back and you'll wait in this shorter queue. But I'm telling you, when people find out that you're about to spend the amount of money you're about to spend on a single cookie, about $6, and the amount of time you're gonna invest in getting a cookie, they don't get it until they get it. Taking a look at the Gideon's menu, they always have a cookie of the month, and this month in November, it's called Pumpkin Fist, and it's a pumpkin bread chocolate crumb cookie. Never been so excited to eat a cookie in my entire life because I am a basic witch. They also have their classics that stick around pretty much all the time. The original chocolate chip, pistachio toffee, peanut butter crunch, cookies and cream, triple chocolate. Right now they also have the banana bread chocolate chip. Here at Disney Springs, they do a morning exclusive co coffee cake cookie that's amazing. And then in the evening, they do a dark coffee cake cookie, which is dark chocolate. Again, they do those enormous cake slices. You can ask the cast here what they have. They have a variety of cold brews on tap, including peanut butter, which is their signature. It's amazing. Pumpkin chai, cookies and cream, a classic, and a seasonal French toast right now, too. Oh, it is just wizardry and magic come together in the form of dessert, and I can't wait for pumpkin. Plus, whenever you get your Gideon's card, they have their artwork on it, and uh, this is Pumpkin Fist, and look how cute he is. I'm telling you, it's like a haunted library in here with a haunted mansion aesthetic and the best smell your nostrils have ever smelled. And I'm having a very hard time with self-control right now because obviously I'm getting a cookie, but also, do I need Victor the Shark the shirt? Proceeds went to a shark conservation fund. I brought the print and now they have a shirt with little Victor the Shark and I think he's so cute. Do I need Victor as well as a cookie? Also, aren't these little characters so fun? They design them for different things. If you are a Disney nerd, you may recognize who this is modeled after. I already have the shirt with him on it. His name's Dr. Tobias Brimstone, but he's designed after a certain Imagineer. I just think this place is so cool. I did it. I bought the shirt too. How could I not? It's a Gideon shirt with a shark on it. Look how cute he is. He's just a little guy. I love him. And I love supporting small business, so. But now, let's get into this cookie. When I say these babies are half a pound, I mean it. Look how big that cookie is. Here, for frame of reference. Here's my face. Here's the cookie. They're the same. Okay. It smells so good. It smells like pumpkin. It smells autumnal. It smells cinnamony. 
and I know it's November, y'all, but that's still pumpkin season. Pumpkin season is a state of mind that I live in all the time, but it's only publicly, like September, October. November, stop it. You don't have to go to peppermint yet. You can stay in pumpkin. Can't wait to see what this baby looks like on the inside. Oh my gosh, it is ooey, it is gooey. This is what is so beautiful about Gideon's cookies. They are like almost underbaked. They're not, You're, they're fine, they're perfectly healthy, but they are like so gooey and chewy. Holy bleep. Thank you, Gideon's Gargoyle, for this gift. Holy moly. I didn't think I could like Gideon's more than I did. Oh my God. I need a moment. I'm gonna need a moment to just to just really think about things. And how every moment in my life has been a lie until now because I didn't know true love. That, that's not true. I have a wonderful husband, great friends like Matt, dogs, family, but this cookie would make the list now. That's what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I was a little worried about the chocolate in it because sometimes the Gideon's chocolate cookies are too rich for me. Like the chocolate chip, very good, but not my favorite. I prefer like the peanut butter one or when they mix up the chocolate a little bit. The chocolate is very, very light. It's just a subtle kiss on the on the cookie. The pumpkin is the star, and it does taste like ooey, gooey pumpkin bread. So it's definitely sweet because it's a cookie, but the pumpkin part itself isn't super duper sweet. It tastes like real pumpkin, not artificial pumpkin. And then you've got this autumnal cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, all the wonderful spices that make pumpkin dessert so wonderful. And then the, the secret treat, the secret ingredient are these like streusel bits on the top, these like chunks right here. These chunks you see, they are like a little bit firmer than everything else. So they almost add like a little bit of a crunch. They remind me of the coffee cake cookie in that way. It's phenomenal. It's perfect. It's wonderful. And right now I've never been so happy to be a Disney adult. You can't make this up. While I was eating my delicious Gideon's cookie, this like I assume two couples came by and they were like, there's no way I'd wait in line that long for a cookie. Who waits in line that long for a cookie? And they looked at me and they're like, is it even that good? Is it worth it? And I said, yeah, it's hundred percent worth it. And they were like, mm-hmm. They didn't believe me. They were skeptical, but I'm telling you, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. You get it. For the final things on the list, we must head to the marketplace. That is the mostly remaining part from downtown Disney, that in the west side. Pleasure Island's been completely redone, if you remember downtown Disney from several years ago at this point. But the marketplace is where you're gonna find a lot of the Disney, it's like the Disneyest part of Disney Springs. It's where you've got World of Disney, the giant character merchandise shop. It's where you've got Goofy's uh, Candy Company. It's where you've got T-Rex and Rainforest Cafe. It's where you've got the Lego store. So this is, yeah, your Disneyest part of Disney Springs. We're headed into World of Disney, which is the largest character merchandise shop in Walt Disney World. Disney adults love Disney merchandise. Now I know we already got into collectibles, which are a little more niche. Those are things like popcorn buckets or pins or things people wait in really long lines for to acquire. Merchandise is a little more general than that. It's no surprise that my favorite kind of merchandise are ears. So I'm checking out the ears, but there's all kinds of merchandise for you to be in love with. Maybe you're a fan of the new Munchlings, which are scented plushes themed like different snacks. Maybe you love Nuimos, which are straight from Tokyo Disney and they're little characters that you can buy little outfits to dress up. Maybe you love spirit jerseys, which are basically just expensive long sleeve shirts. I'm not here to judge. Maybe you love dishes. Maybe you love purses. Maybe you love lounge flies. But at the end of the day, no matter what thing you love, all Disney adults love merchandise. And non-Disney adults don't get it. Which means on my checklist, it's to grab some kind of merch. Now I have been on the quest for a few pairs of ears. There are black ears where the bow's off to the side all cattywampus. Christmas ears should be coming out soon. Disneyland also got Black Panther ears. So, as my day doing ultimate Disney adult things, I gotta find some merchandise to add to my collection. Alas, no new ears here. They do have a very cool Wakanda section for Black Panther 2, but they don't have the ears. They still have Halloween up while I'm here, so no Christmas ears yet. And I have yet to see those black bow ears anywhere. But 
we do not give up. And there are several other stores we can pop into across our fingers. Our next stop is Marketplace Co-op. Co-op is cool because it's designed to be like a co-op, like a marketplace which is hence the name. Uh, so each of the different sections has different goods. So you have the vault collection here for the 50th anniversary. Then you have a homes goods section. You have an art section. You have a brand new National Geographic section. And they have pet section. And they have D-Tech. Uh, so like cell phone case accessories, etc. They have newish orange bird Crocs. But no ears. They have this nightmare serving tray. But no use. The art section has been converted into Marvel. So I thought maybe the Black Panther ears? But alas, no dice yet. Tony, do you know where I can find some ears? No. In the Nat Geo section, I was hoping to find something better than ears, and it's this shark shirt that Disney made, and it had a picture of a shark on it, and it had like all the anatomy of the shark on it, and then it said Great White Shark, but it was definitely a reef shark, and I wanted it, but then they pulled it from the website because the obvious mistake, because I was gonna get someone with a cree cut, cricket, whatever it's called, to like put not a, print that out, and then I was gonna iron that on, but alas. No dice in Marketplace Co-op, so let's go into Trendy. Get it? Trendy? Like, trendy, but like, you get it. Trendy has a lot of the collabs and collections that Disney adults love. I'm talking lounge fly purses, I'm talking ears, I'm talking Disney dress shop dresses, which are expensive dresses themed to different Disney things. I'm talking Dooney and Burks, seeing all that right here. But what I am not seeing our ears that I'm looking for. Next stop, the pin collectors. Now this is real, this is real Disney adult stuff here, friends, because you can collect literally thousands of pins that come out every year. I'm not sure there's anyone on the planet that actually collects all thousands, but there are special ones that only cast members get that you have to find by trading with cast members. There are different collections for different characters or different times of year. There are special ones that only come out for certain events. And uh, people go nuts for pins. No go at the pin shop, but we do not lose faith. We do not lose hope. We continue on. There's a few more stores, so keep those fingers crossed. Slaying my way into 12 days of Christmas. This is a 365 day a year holiday shop. So maybe they got the new Christmas years. I love this shop. I come in here all the time, no matter the season. I love Christmas ornaments. I think they're so fun. They'll personalize them for you. They've got tons of different characters and decor and stockings and just lovely. No go at the Christmas shop. They didn't have any ears, but we are coming into the wonderful world of memories. They seem to have some. Let's take a look. Sad. Haven't given up hope yet. And I'm headed into Disney style which is over on the west side, and it's kind of like a trendy spot that sells a lot of the newer stuff, the newer collections, like this Aladdin line right here with the ears I have not purchased yet. This shop is made for your millennial Disney adults because they have Darkwing Duck. They've got Huey, Dewey, and Louie for DuckTales. They do a lot of 90s and throwback stuff in here, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, and I love it. Look at this Pizza Planet collection. It is perfection. Look, a literal pizza server. Do I need that? Is that my treat for the day? I also really like this Pizza Planet shirt. Also, <gasps> is this it? Is this the winner? Oh my gosh, these scrunchies are hilarious. I'm gonna make one more stop at the Marvel Superhero Headquarters to see if they have anything new and cool and maybe Black Panther. Otherwise, I think those Pizza Planet scrunchies are a delight. Marvel Superhero Headquarters is exactly what it sounds like. It's a store featuring a bunch of Marvel stuff. Maybe I should just buy Gator Loki. Here's the Black Panther section. I'm not seeing any ears. Guess I'll have to wait for when I go to Disneyland. Okay, I came back into Disney style to get the scrunchies and something else caught my eye. And I didn't notice it before because there's literally like three left in total. One in my size. Look at this shirt. Wait for it, wait for it. It's the Aristocats. I don't think I own a single piece of merchandise with the Aristocats on it. All three of them 
Berlioz, Marie and Toulouse. Um, I'm obsessed. And there's only one left of my size, so that's gotta be it. That's the winner. Shirt acquired, and you know what? I might not even just wear that to Disney World. I might wear this, the way it's cut, it's cute. I might wear that in the real world, too. Well, that's a wrap on my ultimate Disney adult day. I wore ears, I wore accessories, I wore Mickeys. I had breakfast with the characters, alone, as an adult. And I got emotional about it. I ordered a collectible popcorn bucket of a little frog very early in the morning. I went to a theme park that is largely considered to be for small children, and I didn't even ride anything. I waited a long time to get a cookie, and then I walked around stores full of mouse ears and glitter and rainbows and color and cartoon characters, and then I bought a shirt with cartoon kittens on it, even though I have many other shirts with cartoon characters on it, to wear out in public. How do I feel at the end of all this? Fabulous. It may be cringy to be a Disney adult and spend your time in theme parks, wandering around merchandise shops, and hugging cartoon characters, but you know what else is cringy? Judging other people for what makes them happy. So I say, whether you're a Disney adult, a Star Wars nerd, a Harry Potter dork, who cares? I am, and I had a pretty awesome day. I hope you had fun coming with me on this adventure today, hitting some new places we haven't shown on the channel yet, exploring some merchandise locations. Let us know what other kind of content you want to see down in the comments. Let me know if you're a proud Disney adult down there as well. Until next time, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media. If you're a Disney adult, join our Discord. We're having a good time over there. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it's the magical. Bye! Thank you.